see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. The next talk is the last talk of this afternoon session. And the uh, Atsushi Iwaki uh, will be the next speaker. And he is going to tell us about the thermal pure quantum matrix product state. Okay, please. Um, okay, thank you for introduction. Uh, my name is Atsushi Iwaki from the University of Tokyo. Uh, thank you very much for giving the chance of presenting this work. Uh, which is on record. Uh, and these are the contents of my talk. I'm first going to introduce some of your quantum states and the matrix product states as a background of our study. After that, I'm going to go through our theory on TPQ MPS. Next. Uh, this last sketch is a classification of quantum many body pure states in terms of entanglement and temperature. In a ground state, T equals zero, uh, the entanglement is small, and it follows a so-called area law, which can be well described by MPS. And the number of parameters required is of the order of the system size n. Uh, in contrast, at t equal infinite, uh, the state is completely random and maximally entangled state. Uh, here, how the entanglement entropy behave with subsystem size is uh, known as a page curve. Uh, we, need an we need an exponentially number of parameters uh, then, uh, and this is the place we are targeting intermediate temperature uh, and because in condensed matter physics, uh, the lower temperature properties, uh, for example, the specific, specific heat susceptibility as a function of temperature is very important to extract the information on the interesting low energy phases uh, that are realized in quantum materials. If we want to deal with finite temperature, uh, the state is described as the thermal pure quantum states uh, called TPQ states. Uh, and this state has volume low entanglement. And now we first would like to see the conventional description of the final temperature state, uh, which is called Gibbs state. Uh, this is a mixed state. Uh, as you can see, it's an ensemble of exponentially large number of eigenstates. And because of this very large number of summation, it is practically impossible to describe it in a computer. The summer entropy is the phonormal entropy of the Gibbs state, uh, which is given as minus low log low. Uh, why the Gibbs state has Exponentially small purity. Uh, typic the typical state has higher purity, almost one. Uh, namely, a uh, single typical state represents the sum of equilibrium, equilibrium alone by itself. Um, this is one example of typical state. Um, then, Suppose that we are dividing the system into subsystems A and B. In the typical states, the subsystems play the role of heat bus by entangling each other, uh, like this purple line. Uh, and the typical state is locally equivalent to the given state. So this means that the entanglement entropy as A uh, is equal to the sum of entropy SPH. And this is a support that the entanglement entropy of the typical state uh, follows a volume law uh, because the sum of entropy is also following the volume law as anybody knows. And now 
The TPK states have been used in numerical physics from 1986 and uh, by Japanese people and also by European people as well. Um, this is one of the simplest preparation of a microcanonical typical state. Uh, here we start from the random state, which is given by the random superposition of the whole Hubert space, uh, like this. And then by operating the Hamiltonian to the, that random state repeatedly, uh, we can decrease the temperature down to nearly zero, uh, uh, where a is Hamiltonian divided by the system size and L is real number, uh, which can be probably chosen. And with the TPK method, uh, we are only able to access the size up to 30. Uh, so this is the reason why we started to think about combining the almost size three MPS with TPQ states. Um, next. Now, I'm going to explain the matrix product states. Uh, here, we consider 1D quantum many body system of size N and of local dimension D. The MPS represent, represent a pure state as plain as local matrix A. And the Lanco matrix A is called bond dimension chi. By keeping this chi constant, we can describe pure, pure state by nd square times chi parameters. For the ground state, the matrix product representation is already being very successful as a variational function of DMRG. To understand the, the entanglement property of the MPS, uh, it's useful to go to the so-called canonical form of the MPS. Uh, all MPS can be transformed to the canonical form without increasing, increasing the bond dimension. Uh, here, lambda is the Schmidt coefficient uh, when we divide the system at each bond. Uh, once we are given this kind of construction, we are able to immediately obtain the entanglement property when we divide the system into half at that bond. And so if you cut the bond, the entanglement entropy is going to be uh, minus lambda square log lambda square, uh, which has upper bound log chi um, because the dimension of the matrix is uh, bounded by chi. And this is actually the earlier law um, because in 1D, the earlier is a single point and is a constant. Um, practically, uh, if we take chi exponentially large, uh, we are able to describe arbitrary quantum states, uh, which distributes over the whole Hilbert space. Uh, uh, however, by restricting chi, we are able to describe, describe only the small corner of Hilbert space, uh, where we have only the low entangled states. Next. Uh, now, this is the outline of our work. As I mentioned before, the typical state has a volume low entanglement and need exponentially many parameters, but the MPS can represent only low entangled states and instead need only polynomial parameters. So these two contradictory concepts, the TPQ and the MPS seem to be incompatible with each other. And so it should be quite nonsense to combine them. Uh, however, we found that uh, they can indeed be combined by introducing a fictitious entanglement bus on both edges of the 1D chain, uh, which we call auxiliaries. And I'll show you later on that at low temperature, 
our construction indeed succeeded in actually reproducing the volume low entanglement of the TPQ state. And it requires very small computational cost, uh, which is a benefit of using our method. Okay. <clears throat> now let us see the load of auxiliaries at infinite temperature. Um, by using the random matrices, random unitary matrices, uh, we can prepare the random MPS called RMPS in the canonical condition. Uh, and now this construction was given by Garnelone at all in 2010. And we can also add the auxiliaries in our construction in addition to their construction uh, to describe the RMPS in our context. So let us compare these two constructions and how they behave. Uh, in the previous work on this paper, uh, it was already shown that the our MPS without auxiliaries can be produced infinite T physical quantity very well. Uh, however, the variance was not very clear. So we evaluated how the variance of the physical quantities by RMPS should behave. And, and this is the analytical result, uh, where it says that the variance of one site uh, for one site operator follow the square of chi inverse. And we demonstrated a numerical experiment for two different species of MPS uh, with and without auxiliaries. Uh, here is a variance of the energy density. Uh, in our construction, uh, it really follows the chi square inverse, but for the conventional MPS without auxiliaries, uh, it saturates to a larger variance value. So Comparing these two different behavior, uh, which means that the auxiliaries are playing a quite important role, um, at least at infinite temperature. And now we go to the most important results at infinite temperature. Uh, I'm going to explain more about this uh, phase construction in the later slide. Uh, we first show how the entanglement property would be at each temperature. Let us see the left panel here, uh, where we divide the system at ice bond to the left and the right part. Uh, we can see that the entanglement curve is uniform through all temperature. Uh, a small k indicates a higher temperature and a uh, larger K indicates lower temperature. Uh, this flat part comes from the fact that the auxiliaries allows us to keep the entanglement towards the belly edge of the system. Uh, so if you remember the convex upward page curve, uh, where the entanglement is exactly zero at both edges, the difference is quite significant. So in the light panel here, uh, we next divide the system into not half, but to the center part and the rest of the system. And we are going to evaluate the entanglement entropy by the size of the center subsystem, uh, which we call small m. And we immediately see that at low enough temperature of about k equals 400, uh, which is about the about the owner of the typical energy scale of the model. Uh, we already find the near slate curve, which is increasing almost linearly with increasing the subsystem size n. And now we calculated these quantities up to large n equal 64 site. Uh, and you can see that the entanglement does not stop growing 
until the subsystem reaches the very edges of the system. And this was quite surprising for us. And now, in order to prove that this volume law like behavior actually makes sense physically, we try to extract the summer entropy by the slope of this linear curve uh, we obtain in numerics, uh, which is given in this dotted line. Um, as we increase the bond dimension chi, extracted slope uploads the exact, ent exact entropy uh, calculated by separately quantum Monte Carlo simulation, uh, which is the yellow line. And now, in a numerical physics, I think that there has been no previous work and that calculated the summer entropy from the entanglement volume law. So uh, this is probably, probably the first example that the quantum entanglement could be reproducing a summer entropy at least numerically. And now uh, we go back to the detail of the algorithm of typical MPS. And it is quite simple. Uh, it follows the algorithm of the original typical method. And the difference is that we are just dealing with uh, MPS with auxiliaries. Um, now, in the first step, uh, prepare the Prepare the RMPS by taking the element of matrix A to be independently generated from the complex Gaussian distribution. Uh, second, uh, we operate L minus H to prepare the state K minus one. In third step, uh, we transform this MPS to the canonical form because the bond dimension increased by the operation given by given in step two, uh, and then we truncate the bond dimension for saving the computational memory. Uh, step three is quite important to keep the bond dimension in a finite value. Uh, notice that we can evaluate the microcanonical temperature here uh, corresponding to this K at each step. So this microcanonical temperature decreases in repeating the step two and step three. And we do this repetition until the microcanonical temperature becomes sufficiently low. And typically, a maximum K is up to a few thousands, uh, which will give the temperature of 0 0.01 times the typical energy scale of the system. Um, finally, uh, we get the series of microcanonical typical states labeled by K. Uh, and the linear combinations of the ex expectation values obtained by these series of Ks uh, give, give the canonical ensemble of the physical quantities of all temperature uh, using this formula. Uh, to have better accuracy, we need to take about five to 10 lines uh, following this step one to step five uh, and take the average. But the number of the average is required is much smaller than the other method. So this is the actual demonstration given for the transverse IZ model, which is one of the simplest models and is used quite frequently as a benchmark. Uh, we introduced no interaction between the auxiliary systems and the main system. And therefore, the result of typical MPS method agrees well with that of the open boundary condition system. Uh, with small bond dimension, high equal 10 for 16 sites and high equals 40 for 64 sites, uh, we already get sufficiently exact value. Uh, we take 10 samples for 16 sites and uh, five samples for 64 sites. And so the number of samples in the typical MPS method is much smaller than the other methods. 
uh, for example, the comparable Monte Carlo simulation requires about 100 samplings uh, to take the accurate Monte Carlo average, and this is much more costly. Uh, and also for other MPS based method like uh, MET, uh, we, we also need 100 samples on average for each temperature. And here for each temperature means that if you want to prepare these numbers of set dead set, we need 100 random averages times 40 temperature dots in all. So this is quite costly. And we also do the same demonstration for the Heisenberg chain as well. And you can see that um, they are also in good agreement with exact result. Um, so for example, the typical calculation time required for our method is about 15 minutes for 16 sites and about eight hours for 64 sites on the laptop in the laboratory. And this System size is not reachable for the usual TPQ method. And so this is the summary. Uh, we are able to reproduce the volume law of the MPS by introducing the auxiliary to the both edges of the MPS. The TPQ MPS method is useful for thermodynamical calculations in large systems. And we think that. And this is a new way of describing the finite temperature state, uh, which is useful for probably people in other fields as well. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. So uh, now the talk is open for the question and Tezuka some please ask your question. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your nice talk. Uh, so. The inverse temperature at each step k, uh, does it depend on uh, the sample you generate or the band dimension in your procedure? Or is it typically very close to each other, even if the initial sample is different or bond dimension is different? Uh, uh, because you measure the temperature, right? Uh, you see. And uh, this, this uh, microcanonical temperature changes by the bond, initial bond dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the answer is yes. And uh, it's microcanonical temperature, uh, a microcanonical temperature behavior uh, changes by the uh, Initial bond dimension, but uh, I I have not study uh, study at also in detail and uh, detail about mm -hmm. that. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So uh, I have one question about the volume law okay. of your entanglement entropy. Uh, I I think if you fix the bond dimension chi, and if you increase the system size, and you must observe the violation of the volume law. Is that correct? Because the if you fix the mode dimension, we have the upper limit of the entanglement entropy. Yeah. And so we cannot uh, increase the entanglement entropy yeah. above that value. Yeah, I see. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the the bond dimension required for reproducing the volume law is uh, is is mass. Depend is depend on system size, okay. Yeah. But 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 we uh, uh we succeeded in uh, system size n equals sixty four sites. It is 
very large system, I think. So, uh, so in practice, mm -hmm. it is succeeded in volume. In, it is succeeded in reproducing volume low in larger large systems in vertical physics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So in, in practice, we can use this method to reproduce the volume law. So, yes. Okay. Thank you. So any other questions? No question. If not, the let's thank all. Uh, there is a comment from the Hotta san. <laughs> in the chat box. Um, just to just to mention that the upper bound of the entropy, uh, upper bound of the volume law, of course, uh, depends on the system size, and that uh, well, it also depends on the model because um, the entropy of the well, an entropy of the state which we are targeting also depends on the temperature and also on the size. Mm -hmm. So that um, practical, I think, is going to be two log chi anyway. Mm -hmm. bound. But if the system size is not um, small enough to uh, keep the entropy as small as like two log chi, mm -hmm. it's gonna be fine. And I yeah. think basically it's gonna be the uh, reasonable tar target of the model, I think, in interest in condensed matter at least. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comment? And if not, let's thank the, all of the speakers in this session again. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So are there any announcements from the organizers? <laughs>